The Senate will come to order. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President. I impose a call of the Senate. The Senate is now under call. Senator Murphy. Mr. President, I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the Sergeant at Arms be instructed to bring in the absent members. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say no. The motion prevails. Members, if you'd be so kind as to stand. And members, for your edification, today's chaplain is Imam Feroz Hundo. He's from the Minnesota um, uh, Nusrat Nuz Mosque in Coon Rapids. As usual, members following the prayer, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I begin in the name of God. I begin in the name of the God of Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac the God of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. The God who is the most gracious, ever merciful, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace and blessings of God Almighty be upon you all. I am honored and humbled to stand before you all today. As a member of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Muslims who believe that the Messiah has come, we join together in prayer before our Creator. I will now recite a few verses from the Islamic holy book, the Holy Quran. It states, all praise belongs to Allah, Lord of all the worlds, the gracious, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. You alone do we worship, you alone do we ask for help. Guide us on the right path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your blessings, those who have not incurred your displeasure, and those who have not gone astray. O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of God, bearing witness in justice, and let not a people's hostility incite you to act otherwise then with justice. Be always just, that is nearer to righteousness, and fear God, surely God is aware of what you do. And create not disorder in the earth after it has been set in order, and call upon God in fear and hope. Surely the mercy of God is close unto those who do good. Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget or fall into error. Our Lord, burden us not with what we have not the strength to bear and remove our sins and grant us forgiveness and have mercy on us. Surely you are our master. Amen. Thank you so very much. The secretary will take the roll.
Abler, Anderson, Barr, Bolden, Carlson, Champion, Coleman, Swadzinski, Dames, Dibble, Dornick, Dreheim, Draskowski, Duckworth, Diedzik, Eichhorn, Farnsworth, Fateh, Frentz, Green, Grunhagen, Gustafson, Hostchild, Herr, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Jasinski, Johnson, Klein, Coran, Kroon, Kunish, Kupek, Lang, Latz, Liskey, Limmer, Lucero, Mann, Marty, Matthews, McQuaid, McEwen, Miller, Mitchell, Mohammed, Morrison, Murphy, Nelson, Umover, Baton, Pappas, Pa, Port, Pratt, Putnam, Rarick, Rasmussen, Rest, Seeberger, Utke, Weber, Wiesenberg, Westland, w Wickland, Zhang. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, I will say. Uh, a quorum is present. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, rule the following members intend to vote under Rule 40.7. Members, and if you want to follow along, I am looking at the Senate agenda dated today, Monday, February 19th. We will start at the second order of business, executive and official communications. The following communications were received. Please make, make note of it. No action, members, is required. We will now proceed to the fifth order of business, report of committees. Senator Mur Murphy for a motion to adopt the committee reports. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the committee reports printed on the agenda be adopted with the exception of the reports pertaining to appointments. On that adoption, on the adoption of the committee reports, all in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Murphy to lay appointments on the table. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the committee reports pertaining to appointments be laid on the table. On that motion, all in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. <laughs> Members, we will now proceed to the sixth order of business. That is a reading, second reading of Senate bills. The secretary will read the Senate file numbers. Senate file number 3545. The Senate file has been given its second reading. Members, we will now move to the eighth order of business. That is the introduction and first reading of Senate bills. The bills listed on today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred as indicated with the following changes. Members, if you will go to page number four, you'll see Senate file number 3839. That bill has been referred to the Committee on Human Services. Members, if you go to page five, you will notice that there is Senate file number 3849. That bill has been referred to the Committee on Judiciary and Public Safety. Members, we will now go to page number eight. On page number eight, you will see Senate file number 3974. That bill has been referred to the Committee on Jobs and Economic Development. If you go over to page number nine, members, you'll see Senate file number 3879. That bill has been referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. If you proceed to page number 16, you will see Senate file number 3995. That bill has been referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. And if you go to page number 20, you will see Senate file number 3978. And that bill has been referred to the Committee on finance. As I mentioned, members, the bills listed on today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred as indicated. <laughs> members, we will now proceed to the ninth order of business. That is motions and resolutions. We will adopt the author's motions as one motion. All in favor say aye. All opposed say no. The motion prevails. I will now call on individual members for motions. Senator Klein. Mr. President, uh, I move that Senate file 1949 be withdrawn from the Committee on Finance and re referred to the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection. I have spoken to both chairs and we are in agreement. Thank you, Senator Klein. Senator Klein moved that Senate file number 1949 be withdrawn from the Committee on Finance and re referred to the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection. All in favor say aye. All opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Young. Uh, 
Mr. President, I move that Senate File 2518 be withdrawn from the Committee on Health and Human Services and re referred to the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection. I've talked with uh, both chairs and we are in agreement. They are Thank you. Agreement. Thank you, Senator Young. Senator Young, move that Senate File Number 2518 be withdrawn from the Committee on Health and Human Services and re referred to the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection. All in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that Senate file number 2584 be withdrawn from the Committee on Environment, Climate, and Legacy and be referred to the Committee on Transportation. Uh, Mr. President, it's my bill, and we, I've spoken with both chairs, and we agree. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Dibble. Senator Dibble moves that Senate file number 2584 be withdrawn from the Committee on Environment, Climate, and Legacy and re referred to the Committee on Transportation. All in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator McEwen for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the appointment withdrawn from the Committee on Labor and placed on the confirmation calendar under Senate Rule 8.2, reported in the journal for February 19, 2024, be returned to the committee from which it was withdrawn, uh, pertaining to the Workers' Compensation Court of Appeals and uh, Patricia Maloon. Thank you, Senator McEwen. Senator McEwen moves that the appointment with, be withdrawn Oh, excuse me, that the appointment withdrawn from the Committee on Labor and placed on the confirmation calendar under, rule, uh, under Senate Rule 8.2, reported in the journal for February 19, 2024, be returned to the committee from which it was withdrawn. All in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. The motion prevails. <laughs> Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to take up the confirmation calendar. On that motion, all in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the report from the Committee on Elections reported April 27, 2023, pertaining to appointments be taken from the table. Thank you, Senator Carlson. Senator Carlson moved that the report from the Committee on Elections reported April 27, 2023, pertaining to appointments, be taken from the table. All in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. <laughs> on that motion, uh, Senator Carlson moved that the foregoing report be adopted. Senator, uh, 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 Senator Carlson. It, uh, Mr. President, I move that the foregoing report be now adopted. Thank you, Senator Carlson. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. <laughs> Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that in accordance with the report from the Committee on Elections reported April 27, 2023, the Senate, having given it its advice, do now consent and confirm the appointment, uh, the appointment of Carol Flynn and Faris Rashid and I have some descriptions of some of those. Carol Flynn uh, is a, uh, this is a reappointment. Carol Flynn was a senator from 1990 to 2000 and chaired the Ethics and Transportation Committees. She served on the Campaign Finance Board since 2015 and if confirmed, she'll serve for a term ending 2027. The Elections Committee recommended her confirmation on a unanimous vote. I urge a green vote for Carol Flynn's reappointment to the Campaign Finance and Disclosure Board. Thank you, Senator Carlson. Senator Carlson moved that in accordance with the report from the Committee on Elections reported April 27, 2023, the Senate having given its advice, do now consent to the confirmation uh, and confirm the appointment of Campaign Finance and Public Disclosure Board, Carol Flynn and Faris Rashid. And Senator Carlson has already explained the motion. I am now going to Senator Coran. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I'd like to concur um, as serving on the lead in the Senate for on elections, I'd like to confer, um, confirm uh, with Senator Carlson as well on his recommendation for the two appointment for the Campaign Finance Board and urge green vote. Thank you. Any other discussion on that motion? Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to stand and speak in favor in particular of uh, former Senator Carol Flynn. 
uh, and her reappointment to the Campaign Finance and Public Disclosure Board. Uh, Senator Flynn is a uh, friend and a mentor uh, and a constituent of mine. Uh, and uh, during her service here in this chamber, uh, members, um, she was an exemplary senator uh, and had uh, a tremendous amount of respect, was highly effective, and worked uh, very effectively uh, with both uh, both parties. Uh, she's served on the Campaign Finance and Public Disclosure Board for almost a decade now and has uh, turned in very, very fine service in that capacity uh, and um, is very uh, worthy of reappointment. She has a long history of public service uh, under behind her and, and much more to go, and I think this is, would be a well-advised uh, favorable vote in favor of reappointing Carol Flynn to the Campaign Finance and Public Disclosure Board. Thank you, Mr. President. Any further discussion? Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. President. I also stand to support the appointment of uh, former Senator Carol Flynn. Um, uh, Carol, uh, Senator Flynn was an excellent transportation chair, um, only exceeded by our current and immediate past transportation chairs. <laughs> um, she really knew a lot about that issue. She also served very actively on the tax committee, and I had the pleasure of, of uh, sharing a suite with her, so I urge her appointment. Any other discussion? Seeing none, Senator Carlson moved that in accordance with the report from the Committee on Elections, reported April 27, 2023, the Senate, having given its advice, do now consent and confirm the appointment of Carol Flynn and Ferris Rashid. All in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Members, we will now proceed to the 13th order of business. I'm sorry, hold on one moment. Members, we're just trying to make sure that we have the record correct. So remaining under motions and resolutions, we will now go to announcements. Uh, with that being said, uh, I am now going to Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, on your desk is a reminder of the annual uh, St. Paul reception. Welcome back, legislators. And um, it's going to be this year at the Excel Energy Center, which um, some of you, many of you may have been there for either for hockey or for, um, uh, for concerts um, or other events. And something that I, came to my attention on the notice, which I wasn't aware of, is there is also an opportunity to skate on the Excel Energy Center ice. So don't miss out on that opportunity. They, always, they also have a great buffet, and you can park right at the River Center ramp, so it's easy to get to. Or you can, um, if you're coming from your apartment downtown, you can always walk through the Skyway. So I hope to see you all tomorrow night, 5 to 7.30. Senator Kunish. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, members, you're going to find in your email as well as probably a paper copy of an invitation uh, for next Monday. You're going to, you'll need to sign up for this. Uh, we'd like to invite you to join Minnesota Library Associates to celebrate our uh, legislative successes. All Minnesota legislators, staff, Constitu uh, constitutional officers and others are invited to have your picture taken with your favorite book. Maybe you have seen those big posters. It says, read across the top. Um, bring your very favorite book, and uh, we will get your picture taken and put onto one of those great big posters. That poster um, will be exhibited, and uh, we are going to, I'm trying to see, oh, um, the pictures will be taken up in the Cass Gilbert Library next Monday, noon to 3 p.m., so watch for that, and I hope you all join us. Members, I'm only taking announcements before we're going to do a special uh, moment of silence, so I just want to make sure that we get announcements out, okay? Senator Coran. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to remind everybody it's that time of year for topic selection for the Legislative Audit Commission, so put your creative thinking caps on. They're due this Friday, so get your ideas in and submit them by Friday. Thank you. Senator Hoschow. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Duckworth and I want to invite all of you to our kickoff for the Civility Caucus. It'll be this Wednesday, uh, 5 to 8 p.m. at Burger Moe's. No agenda, uh, not stuffy, just a, a happy hour for members to talk and, and get to know each other better. So we hope to see you there. Thanks. Any other announcements? Members, I'm sure that you are aware of the unfortunate set of circumstances that happened uh, over the weekend. We wanted to make sure that we, uh, 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 that we provided an opportunity for uh, senators who represent that area to lead us in, uh, uh, in a moment of silence. But before we stand for the moment of silence, I'm going to call on both Senator Carlson and followed by Senator Carlson. I will then go to Senator Port. Senator Carlson. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President and members, I stand today to honor three heroes that we lost on Sunday. They were a loss not only to the community that I represent, but also the entire state of Minnesota and to some degree the nation. In the early morning of February 18th, Burnsville police officers Paul Elmstead, uh, Matthew Ruge, and Burnsville firefighter Adam Finseth were fatally shot in the line of duty while responding to a domestic call. These men were our beloved neighbors who dedicated their lives to the service of others, and they lost their lives keeping our community and all of us safe. We are also holding Sergeant Adam Medicott, who was injured in Sunday's tragedy, in our thoughts, and we wish him a speedy recovery and the comfort of his family and friends. There is no truer testament to the strength, dignity, and compassion of our community than the selfless bravery of our law enforcement and first responders. I now turn over the, the uh, microphone to uh, Senator Lindsay Port, who is also, a representative, also represents Burnsville, and she will uh, continue the uh, eulogy. Senator Port. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, Officer Elmstrad, Officer Rugi, and Firefighter Finseth found their calling in careers where they put their lives on the line every day to make sure that their communities, their neighbors, were safe. They embodied the spirit of Burnsville, a community where people take care of each other. I see the strength in our of our community in those we lost and in those who remain. As our city grapples with the grief of these losses, we will lean on each other and support one another as we begin to heal. As we move forward from this tragedy, let us rally around our law enforcement and first responders with support and understanding as they heal from the trauma of these losses. Let us stand in solidarity with the survivors in the days and months to come as they navigate the world without their loved ones. And let us honor the lives of us, Officer Elmstrad, Officer Rugi, and Firefighter Finseth with the way that we live ours, with bravery, integrity, and compassion. Mr. President, I ask that we stand for a moment of silence. Members, we so kindly stand. And we will now have a moment of silence for our fallen heroes. Thank you, members. You may be seated. Members, if I can just say that even as you say your, uh, whisper your prayers tonight, that you uh, remember not just this family, but others who uh, on a daily basis uh, make extraordinary sacrifices for all, for, for all of us, no matter where they are. So. If that could be something that is whispered from your lips to God's ears, that would be something that I would truly appreciate. With that being said, Senator Murphy. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members. Thank you for showing such honor, respect, and kindness uh, in this moment. That moves all of us. 
Members, I'm soon going to move a recess of the Senate. Upon reconvening later today, the Senate will adopt any committee reports that become available this afternoon, as well as receive House File 2757 from the House and give it its first reading. A message will go out to all members and staff at least 30 minutes prior to reconvening, but only a couple of members need to return to the chamber later today. Mr. President, I move that the Senate do now recess to the call of the President. On that motion, all in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The, the Senate is in recess until the call of the, of the President.